Hello, and thank you for watching this online presentation brought to you by University Academic Success Programs Writing Centers at Arizona State University. This presentation is on the Chicago Manual Citation Style 17th edition, with some additional information about why we cite, as well as some tips and tricks for avoiding plagiarism. So why do we cite? Some opening questions for you to think about. Uh, why do you think we use citations? What is the purpose of citing sources? What citation styles have you used in your writing? Take a moment to pause the video and jot down some answers to these questions before continuing on. So why we use citations? Citations are used to help create a consensus for how writers should format and present information. It's important because it reminds writers that they are participating in a larger community of scholars and people contributing knowledge to this field. It helps encourage recognition of previous work and those experts in the field that you are writing in. And it helps produce guidelines for writers and readers when looking through various pieces of writing and documents. And when you use citations yourself, it helps convey your own credibility as a writer in this field, um, sharing the information that you're contributing to the community. So some general tips for citing sources, regardless of what citation style you're using. Make sure you are being meticulous. Use the handbook or a credible website to answer crucial questions about formatting and citations. There's a couple of campus resources you can use for this. The writing centers have physical copies of manuals that students can use, as well as uh, that the tutors use to review information. The ASU library has uh, resources both online and in person. And I would also add any uh, local community library or other uh, library in, a, in an area is likely going to have a reference section that will have a copy of a manual that you can use um, if purchasing a manual for yourself is not um, is not a good decision or a good option. Um, and a good thing to remember is that citing is not just a school thing. Uh, even as a professional, there are going to be multiple times where you are going to need to give credit to information where you found it elsewhere. So it is a professional practice and something that you can start practicing now as a student before moving on to your next career endeavors. So what is the Chicago Manual of Style? CMS provides a method for source documentation that's used most commonly in the history field. History places an emphasis on source origins, hence why the Chicago Manual Style uses footnotes on the page. CMS also uses notes and a bibliography, and the most current version of the Chicago Manual Style Handbook is the 17th edition. So let's delve a little deeper into what the CMS format looks like. These are the main components of the Chicago Manual Style CMS. There's going to be a title page. You have the main body of your writing. And within that main body, you're going to be using footnotes or endnotes. There is also a bibliography that's part of the Chicago Manual Style. Uh, some additional components that you may or may not use, depending on the uh, the expectations for your assignment or your document are headings and tables and figures. So to start with the title page, the title should be centered and a third of the way down the page. Your name, class information, and the date should follow several lines later. For subtitles, make sure you end the title line with a colon and place the subtitle on the line that below the initial title and make sure you are double spacing each line of the title page when you're going multiple lines. So here's a quick example of what a title page can look like. You see that the title is centered and it is about a third of the way down. And then a little bit further down you see the student's name, class information, and date. And notice that the name, class, information, and date, because it's going multiple lines, it is double spaced. When you are in the main body, so the main meat of your paper where you're writing uh, your information, your margin should be set at no less than one inch. 
The typeface should be something readable. Typically you're going to use Times New Roman font or Courier. Those are two good ones to uh, set your, your, uh, your word processor to be using. When you're looking at font size, it should be no less than 10 point, but preferably most faculty, most expectations, you're going to want to stick to 12 point font. That's a really good um, kind of average uh, font size to utilize. When you are using titles mentioned in the text, they are capitalized headline style, which means the first words of titles and subtitles and any important words thereafter should be capitalized. Titles in the text are treated with quotation marks or italics based on the type of work that they name. So now let's get into citing using footnotes or endnotes. So with the footnote, in Chicago style, footnotes are commonly used to reference sources in the paper. Footnotes are represented by superscript numbers at the end of a clause or a sentence, generally in consecutive order. The numbers at the end of each clause or sentence are associated with the same number at the bottom of the page. And just an additional note, these notes allow space for unusual types of sources as well as for commentary on the sources cited. So with footnotes, when you're looking at formatting those, the different elements of the footnote are going to be separated by commas. The facts of the publication are enclosed in parentheses. The author's names are presented in standard order, so first name first. Title of larger works, for example books or in, and journals, are italicized, whereas titles of smaller works, such as chapters or articles or unpublished works, are going to be presented in Roman and enclosed in quotation marks. Another thing that you can do with footnotes is shortening footnotes. So a shortened version can and should be used from, from the first note forward. So the first time you cite a source, you're going to use all of that information, share all of the information that you, um, that you can about the source. But then when you are citing that same source again, you'll shorten it. So shortening usually comprises the author's last name and a keyword version of the work's title in four or fewer words. If you are citing the exact same source as the one preceding it um, chronologically um, in your uh, numbered footnote system, you'll use a shortened version of the citation. The title of the work may also be omitted if the note previously includes the title. So the last two slides uh, went over a lot of information. Let's look at some examples here of a footnote. So here you see the first full footnote citation. You have the author's name that starts with their first name, then their last name. The title, there's a comma separating the pieces with the, um, the title of the work, and then the subsequent information in parentheses. Then next you see that in this example, Harvey was cited in the second and third footnote. So because it is numerically following the first full footnote citation, you see that it's shortened here with just the author's last name and the page number that was cited in that particular citation. But then later, number the sixth citation uses Harvey again. But there were two other citations in between there. So here is where you see the shortened version, but is still referring back to a keyword of the text so that the reader knows you are referring back to the same source that you used initially, but a slightly shortened version here. And again, in between there, in citation four and five, you see a different source was used by Emmanuel Kent, um, or Kant, but then the the citation number five includes the a shortened version of the citation, but because a different work was cited, there, it includes the title to differ, differentiate between the original work cited up here and then this translation, which is a, which is a different text. So when should you include a footnote? Ethics, copyright laws, and courtesy to readers requires that authors identify the sources being used to back up their synthesis of information to support their overall analysis of facts or opinions not generally known or easily checked. So you're wanting to make sure that anything that you are citing that came from 
a source other than your own thoughts is being cited. Footnotes must provide sufficient information either to lead the readers directly to the source consulted or for matters that may not be readily available to enable re readers to positively identify them. And that's a good way to think about why you're citing and using footnotes is somebody else who's reading your document might be really inspired by what you're writing and want to look back at the sources that you used to delve deeper into your topic or learn more about themselves. So you're using footnotes to let the reader know, hey, here's where I got that information and how you can find it as well. Um, and then that goes back to what we mentioned in the first slide of lending credibility to the work that you're writing because you're citing other people um, who are knowledgeable in the field as well. So I want to pause briefly and talk about this term IBIDEM. So you might see this in various um, resources or sources talking about Chicago style. So IBIDEM means in the same place. So with footnotes, authors will sometimes use IBIDEM, abbreviated, abbreviated as IBID, to reference a source used in succession. So instead of those shortened versions of the citations. However, this has been changed recently with this 17th edition. So with the 17th edition, the Chicago Manual of Style discourages the use of IBID in favor of those shortened citations we modeled earlier. So per the 17th edition, you should not be using IBID or IBIDM, but be sure to check with your instructor um, to see what, um, what they prefer when it comes to using IBID or using the shortened citations per the 17th edition of the manual. So footnote versus endnote, often students will use footnotes and that is what we've modeled earlier. However, again, some students or professors might use endnotes for stylistic reasons. The big difference between a footnote and an endnote is that footnotes would appear on the exact same page as the cited source. So if you cited sources one, two, and three, the footnotes for one, two, and three would be on page one. Whereas using endnotes, those would appear at the end of a chapter or an end of the document. So even though you might have cited something on page one, you wouldn't include the endnote until the end of the chapter. So again, two different formats, um, two different stylistic preferences. The, um, the Chicago manual style typically defaults with footnote, but again, check with your professor, check with your instructor to make sure that you are following what they expect for your writing. So now let's talk about the uh, setup for a bibliography. So in a bibliography, Chicago style requires that sources be listed with full citations at the end of a document. So in addition to your footnotes, you're also um, using your sources in this bibliography. So with a bibliography format, it is slightly different than what you're using with footnotes. So when you're formatting your bibliography on your with your citations, the bibliography page will start on a brand new page. Even if your page five, your last type, uh, your last p page page of your paper is on page five, and you only have two sentences, the bibliography would start on page six, brand new page. Um, the page is going to be labeled bibliography and that is going to be centered. You will use a hanging indent, which is a half an inch from the left margin for each citation. These are going to be organized alphabetically regardless of what order you used them in your paper. All of these citations are going to be organized alphabetically. And if subsequent sources have the same author, three M dashes can be used in place of the author's name. So let's look at an example. Here is a sheet with an example of a bibliography. You see that bibliography is um, the start of the page and it is centered. You notice the hanging indent here um, with the second line being a half inch in from the original one inch margin. And if you notice throughout um, all, it starts with the author's last name, um, which begins first with the author whose last name begins with A and going in alphabetically. Um, notice here as well that the, uh, the author's last name is put first, which is different than in the footnotes. In the footnotes, if you recall, the author's last name was first in the first full footnote, and then the author's name was second. So that in the bibliography, it's flipped with the last name first and then the first name. 
And then if you notice that we've got several sources by Michael Foucault, so there is the option to use the M dash and then using the rest of the information there. So we talked about footnote versus bibliography briefly there and just want to use some examples now to show you how they're formatted slightly different. So first you notice here with the, the footnote version, again, the, alpha, um, the author's last name starts with their first name and then their last name. You've got the title of the work, parentheses to, you, to note the publication information and the page number. In the bibliography, you notice the difference is that the um, that there is the author's last name starts with their last name and then their first name. There is a period instead of a comma used in the footnotes, so a difference in what punctuation is used. There are no or no uh, parentheses for the publication information, and no page number is used because you are citing you are in, in the bibliography you are talking about the document um, or the source that was used, not where that specific information came from on the specific page. Here's another example of how a footnote looks in the the paper compared to the bibliography at the end. So here, as an example, you notice the superscript number one and then the superscript number two and number three where things are being talked about by this author. And then looking here, you see that Sylvia Edgerton is cited with her um, starting with Sylvia's first name and then last name and the information. And then another example you see here of a shortened citation, um, or I'm sorry, a shortened, shortened footnote citation uh, using the subsequent uh, set footnotes of the same document. Compared again to the bibliography where Sylvia's last name is gone, um, is put first, and there are no uh, page number information nor is um, there uh, parentheses of publication information, which there wasn't publication information in this footnote either. So to uh, kind of wrap up a little bit, starting to talk about academic integrity and honesty, and again, why does citation citations matter? Why does it matter to cite your sources? And it's related to academic integrity and honesty. So plagiarism is defined as um, through the university, um, Arizona State University's provost office, as using another another's words, ideas, materials, or work without properly acknowledging and documenting the source. Students are responsible for knowing the rules of governing the use of another's work or materials and for acknowledging and documenting the source appropriately. So to avoid plagiarism, make sure you are giving credit to a source if you present an idea, definition, statistic, recommendation, etc. that is not your own original thought. So for all information, you need to cite your sources using a citation style approved by your instructor, in this case, Chicago Manual Style. The citation style is the series of formulas about how you cite your sources and show your readers where your evidence came from, as we have demonstrated and gone through, showing footnotes as well as uh, filling out a bibliography. Make sure you have carefully cited sources and following the citation formulas exactly, and that is one really strong way to make sure you are avoiding plagiarism and maintaining your academic integrity. So as we've mentioned, your instructor um, in this situation, you're watching this uh, video because your instructor has asked you to use Chicago Manual style. But just be aware that there are other specific citation styles such as APA, MLA, AMA, IEEE, as well as Chicago style that you may be asked to utilize in your academic and professional career. So with ASU's academic integrity policy, each student is obligated to ask act with honesty and integrity. Each student must respect the rights of others in carrying out all academic assignments. And information for this, um, this piece of, of the information of the presentation has been taken from ASU's academic integrity policy. And we have the source listed here. So if you want to read more or learn more about that, you can go to that website, https provost.asu.edu backslash academic integrity backslash policy. 
So that was a lot of information. Hopefully you can rewatch this video um, as you are using Chicago Manual of Style, but know there are other resources that you can leverage for support moving forward. So we've referenced the manuals. Again, the Chicago Manual of Style, 17th edition, and uh, another good resource can be the uh, a manual for writers by Kate Turbian. Uh, you may have heard Turbian used as kind of like a another way of referring to Chicago Manual of Style. Both of these books again can be great resources um, either in the Writing Center for purchase if you would like to purchase your own copy or other library reference resources as well. There are a number of online resources. The Online Writing Lab through Purdue is a good resource to look up and utilize. ASU Library has resources online as well as some library guides for using different citation styles. University Academic Success Programs, in addition to having resources in our physical centers and on our website, our tutors can also um, walk you through using those resources and um, discuss how you're using those, uh, those footnotes and setting up your bibliography in your writing. And the Chicago Manual of Style website does have some resources and information as well. And from some of our colleagues um, who have been uh, history majors and written in the um, the discipline of history, they have some additional books to recommend um, if you want to delve even deeper. So there is a pocket guide to writing in history by Mary Lynn Rampola and Writing History, a Guide for Students by William Kelleher Story. So the writing centers at ASU were mentioned as a resource and we want to give you a little bit more information about how you can leverage that resource as an option. The writing centers at ASU, writing tutoring is appointment based. You can schedule 30 minute in-person appointments or 50 minute online real time appointments. And you can schedule an appointment to meet with a tutor at any stage of the writing process from brainstorming to reviewing an outline to uh, looking at a draft to kind of giving that final uh, set of eyes before turning in your assignment a couple days in advance. You can schedule one appointment per day and up to four appointments per week and we do recommend that you schedule appointments at least one week in advance to see as many available time options and have as much flexibility to pick a time that's going to work best for your schedule. To book appointments, go to tutoring.asu.edu backslash writing hyphen centers and you'll be directed to our scheduling page. We have several different writing center locations. Um, all of the sites are listed on this slide at the Tempe Polytechnic Downtown Phoenix and West Physical Campuses, as well as online using the Zoom meeting platform. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully this has great information for you all as you're starting using the Chicago Manual of Style for your citations, for your papers, and we hope to see you in the writing centers at some point in the future. And we just wanted to list our references as well that we have used uh, for this presentation. Again, we look forward to seeing you soon.